Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. We're going to open a little package and I can tell what this package is because it's bloody heavy. Boom! Look at that. So you might know that I've uh, built that modeling, modeling machine, the sort of engraving mini milling machine and it's in one of my previous videos. Look in a playlist somewhere. And uh, I use some Fimo type thing, this polymer clay to actually make something. So what I thought I'd do is get a different type of clay and this is DAS, DAS, Dermatologically Tested. Mm. It's just a big old ass lump of clay and I'm not even sure what kind of clay this is, if this is just plasticine or if it sets or if it doesn't set. I'm going to have to do some research on that. But that's not really the point. What the hell is idea mix? marble effect. Sorry, I'm just sort of going by this picture because it looks like they're making jewellery by uh, mixing this stuff up. I, th I think it's just, I think it is a, you know, modelling, uh, oh look, air hardening. There you go, modelling material, air hardening. So that's why it comes in a seal. So that's cool. So what I want to do with that basically is make a block of material so that I can mill it, machine it out. It has to be of a uniform thickness. So that is really the subject of this video, was me trying to work out how to do this. And I've actually assembled the parts. I've made my own kit. So I found a bit of skank tube. I don't even know what it's for. It was just in the garage, you know, under the sort of litter tray or something. Uh, we'll give it a wash. It's a bit of metal tube. You can see it's just a metal tube. I've got a couple of bearings like you get in fidget spinners and I've got a couple of bolts. They're quite long, a bit overkill, but I think that... Ah, where's the lid of my epoxy? Sorry, I freaked out then. Um, yeah, they're a bit overkill, but that's fine because if you see this tube, they'll actually sort of rigid it, rigid it up a bit, make it a bit more rigid because they're gonna sort of hold bearings. And I'm basically gonna do, put the bearing in, put that in the tube, put the bearing in, put that in the tube, and I'm gonna epoxy it in because the tube diameter, the internal diameter, is a little bit bigger than the bolt, so it's kind of pants. But you can see it's a little bit rattly, and it's not going to be a high accuracy device. But the idea is, I'll be able to put out a sliver of um, modelling clay, and then go, ch -ch 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 -ch, and this will act as a sort of thicknesser and make it the uh, correct thickness, or at least a uniform thickness. I'm not sure how thick it's actually going to make it. It looks maybe six or seven mil, but. You know, I'm just going to roll it up, roll it up. So it's like a high accuracy, a precision rolling pin. That's what I'm making. So it's really quite simple. All I've got to do, all I've got to do is really just put some glue and splodge that into there. Um, I could, if I get glue on the inner bearing face, eh, it doesn't really matter that much. We're not going for ultimate accuracy here. So let's just get some glue out. And I'm kind of, oh, thank gosh it still works despite having the lid off it has oozed on the back of this shelf of toolage um so i should just give that a little wipe actually while we're oh no it doesn't wipe i'm kind of hoping that there's a bit of um juice from both parts so even though i've wiped it it'll sort of harden rather than just being sticky i can live with um i can live with hardened i just can't live with sticky it's a bit icky it's icky sticky so let's just mix that up hmm Oh, the fumes, those resiny fumes. Look at my stamp. Look, I've got a handle on that now. That resin, I just love that resin. Five minute epoxy resin. I think I'm definitely gonna buy shares in uh, that company, in Poundland's epoxy resin division, because damn, it's so good. If you haven't got a tube of epoxy resin, or, uh, you know, I say tube, it always used to come in two tubes, but now it comes in one duplex tube. Um, go get some, because it's just so friggin' useful. I don't even know if I made enough now looking at this. It doesn't seem like I've made enough, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna roll with it. I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna say what I say, and I'm not gonna let anybody get in my way, cause my epoxy resining. I'm doing it today. Uh oh. Yeah, it's gonna splurge, isn't it? If you're doing this, um, and it's splurging like it's doing on mine, just make sure it doesn't go in the bearings. It's all right if it goes on the inner race, the face of the inner race. Oh look, if you twist it, wow, it's the glue's going away because it's sucking the glue down the thread. Nice, that's one. 
Let's get that in there. That's kind of cool. So it's like acting as a sort of Archimedes screw, I want to say, an auger, um, sucking that glue down its threads. So maybe if you spin it the other way, if you need the glue to go back out to the sides or something. A lot less glue on this one. Still, I think it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Oh no, there's a blob. Get back here, you. Resistance is useless. Get in there. Maybe I've got to do the old twisting. Screw it up. Which way do you have to screw it in though? That way? Like taking it out? Take it out, take it in. Let me. It's like, actually, it's pressurized. Shoo, shoo, shoo. I almost lost it there, guys. It's uh, pressurized. Look, the tube. It's like a piston. There we go. Bang. So, what I'm going to do is leave that for five minutes. I'm probably going to try to put it like that and put a weight on the end, which is going to be kind of tricky. Maybe I can balance that on there. That's given me a bit more surface area to work with, and then a roll of solder. Ooh. It's like a Jenga. There we go. So I'm going to leave that for five minutes and come back and we'll have a little play. One eternity later. The time has elapsed and it did fall down, but it's okay. It seems all right. Ah, what is that? There's just filth everywhere here in the back office. We're a filthy place. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty good, really. I'm going to just give it a little bit of spit, a little bit of spit, a bit of a wipe. And uh, I think that's okay. I mean, if we kind of hold it up, it's by my eyeball, looks pretty uh, uniform ish. Uniform enough. Good. Oh. So let's open up some of this clay. And I think we've got to be a bit careful with it because we're in danger. Diddling it, diddling it, diddling it. Fire in the disco! Fire in the tackle bell! Fire in the disco! Fire in the gates of hell! Don't you want to know why I keep starting fires? How are you supposed to open that? I, I followed the, the, the uh, decutting thing. So hang on, let me, I'm going to go a bit bit in more I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore their instructions and take it an extra five mil mm -mm. I think this is just saying there's a sticker here once you're done stick it down put it in a Tupperware then let it dry out what I don't know what the hell I think they're full of sheet there's no way you're gonna I can smell it though Ah, oh, it smells exactly like, did you used to have art class at school or CDT or something? It smells well like that. Let's keep going. Ah, it's got that weird clay putty smell. Nice, I like it. Inhale deeply from the putty, my son. So we're just going to extract a uh, chunk. It would have been neat, actually, if we could just get a knife in there and chop it. But because we want to sort of seal it again, we don't have that option. So I'm going to just go with it. I'm going to pinch, pinch an inch. That looks like a nice enough sausage to work with. That's what she said. Boom. <laughs> How to make a turd. It does look exactly like a quite good fake dog poo, doesn't it? It's been extruded out of the buttocks of a canine. One of your, a dirty canine. So I'm just going to wrap this up. It does seem, it's it's pretty easy to wrap, but yeah, I would just put that in a Tupperware. I wouldn't rely on that little sticker. Especially something that's going to air cure. Mm, air cure, I wonder how long you've got. I suspect you've got days. So I'm just going to massage this, I guess. Playing with the sausage. Mm, mm. Oh, it does smell. It's got a weird, um, slightly chemically smell, but I'm not hating it, you know. Mm, it's kind of weird. It's like a weird vegetably chemically smell. So the object of my uh, 
desire it's my, no not my desire i want to try to make something about that size of that plastic bit i think that's a kind of a good working size if, for a blank if you're going to use something for engraving and it is really clay like by the way look how it just sort of splits this might not be so good for engraving maybe we have to just mash it more it's a bit like plasticine and um that way, you know, it's a useful material in the future just to have something hopefully reasonably uniform just to be able to mill out quite easily because I suspect the uh, milling bits are going to go through this like hot butter, <laughs> like hot butter, which will be melted butter, and a um, hot knife through butter. How about that? So, mm, yeah. Might have bitten off more than I can chew with that rolling thing. Okay, okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. So I think the key is to just sort of try to work out how much material really is sensible for this. Hey, that actually did work. Come on, come on, yeah. Yeah, get it all in your bearing races, that's what you want. Putty in your bearing. I suppose you could always just um, pludge it out by hand a little bit and then just use this to roll over the top when you're done. It's put up a lot of fight, I'm telling you. So maybe we've got to go from the inside out here. Yeah, that didn't work out so good. Ah, ah, maybe that's the trick. Drive it over. I, I do get up to some weird things, don't I? I mean, why, who on a summer's day would sensibly be doing this? Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty even actually. It does have a few ripples in it. You might be able to see those on the camera. It does have a few ripples in it, but um, I think, okay, it's, and it's really drying. It's starting to dry bloody already. Um, so I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is just cut a bit off and then I'm gonna put those back in the bag. I don't wanna waste it. Waste, not, want, not. And then we're just gonna play with this one like block of it. Look at that, a block of the purest white, well grey. So this modelling clay by the way is a kilo and it, it's it's way cheaper than the sort of Fimo. It, um, I can't remember the exact cost, I'm going to put a link down below but I think it was a few quid, it was definitely under a tenner um, for a whole kilo of it. So you can make loads of things with that if you've got kids or whatever and you want just a little project to do. I'm going to clean this off though, I think that's going to be definitely not where you want lumps of this to dry on. Yeah, every now and then it's snagging, so it's definitely it's definitely sort of acting like a thickness there. It's touching that. Yeah, I think that does actually work. I'll just hold it at an angle. Let's just see what we can see at an angle there. I think it's pretty good. There's a bit a few low spots, but I don't know. I don't know if it's worth messing with it, to be honest with you. I might just, for fun, as we're here, try to scooch it up, cutch it all up a bit. And that'll have the effect of raising its overall height. And then we can uh, lower it all back down again. And you can really see on my fingers there that this stuff is, is already hardening. So that's kind of cool. It's good that you can have a material that just hardens so quickly. Ought to wipe those bearings down. And it might just reactivate with water. I'm gonna just, mm, I don't know, I put a bit of saliva on my finger there and it, that didn't seem to want to make it come off any quicker. So maybe it's just a some sort of other solvent in there. Come on. Do you remember at school, everything sort of smelled of this and looked, you know, this kind of weird dusty, dusty finish. So I'm just going to do small little rolls, see if that helps. Yeah, I think that's good. I'm pleased, I think that's okay. Tomorrow. It's the day after the miracle of video. We've time travelled. So we've got this blocker stuff here. Um, it's still a bit slightly pliable. I can bend it, so I'm not sure how hard it goes. 
I think it smells to me a little bit like plaster. It's weird. It's definitely like a sort of plaster and pulp, plaster and pulp. And I think it's come out pretty uniform. I probably run this over a bit of, you know, sandpaper, just like that, and just sort of get that down, make sure it's pretty smooth. But all in all, I'm pretty uh, happy with its consistency. <laughs> Excellent. Nice. Okay, forget that colour. That was me trying to sand that down with some emery paper and I made it dark. But look at the finish. It's pretty good. All in all, it's got a decent amount of relief there. Clearly it wasn't that flat. Or certainly could have been flatter because you could see the B out of the back office here isn't very deep. But the rest is actually... Uh, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. I think that, that probably is one of the uh, a surprising outcome, really. I, I didn't think it was going to be that good. It was definitely pretty sharp. Now I'm going to do something that I wouldn't normally want to do, and that's dirty my finger using a bit of this ink here. But let's um, rub just a sort of on top here to get a bit of contrast. Mm. It's a weird sort of surface, really. It's It's not flat like a plaster it's definitely um, kind of a weird papery type thing but I think it'd be quite good for molding too there we go so that's the uh, outcome clearly you can uh, machine this and it, it sort of does hold a hold a sort of um, hold the picture pretty well holds the relief so yeah I think that works damn damn good if you want to uh, sit there and make sort of several blocks of this in advance and then dry them out you definitely want to dry them out because they'll do that air drying takes a bit of time do it in advance and then yeah you've got something rel relatively cheap to sort of machine into test that's good yeah that looks good and then just chuck it away brilliant hope that's been of some use to you go out and buy some modeling clay and get engraving as ever Thanks for watching.